something profound. I wanted to give you something deep. You know, when I looked at the date and I said to myself, well, it's 12, 12, 21. There must be something in, with, 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 in, 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 the, in, in, in that date. Yeah. So maybe that's what I should bring to the people of God. Yeah, as I know that many, 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 many places, there will be, there will be, there will be bishops and uh, senior pastors and prophets telling you that um, according to the Bible, in Suzo Day, this is what happened in those days, and so on and so forth. Um, but as I was pondering on that, you know, um, I had an impression. I had an impression. And the impression said, keep it simple. You know, he said, keep it short, keep it simple, and make it straightforward. So for those of you that are writing, today's topic is bear good fruit. Bear good fruit. Bear good fruit. In the days of the past, in the, in the good and innocent days, um, and Pastor Ashley can bear me witness, please, and many of some of you here, we will have young children, teenagers, walking down the streets, and they will get to the front of a house that has a tree that has some fruits. Maybe nice ripe mangoes. Alright? Uh, or, 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 or well, for those of you here, peach, um, almond, or the what is known as the African star apple. The African star apple. And balumo. Balumo or Udala in some places. So, so, so when they, when when these youths are going down the streets and they see the tree and it has the fruits ripe, ready, what they do? They stone at the fruit. Right? They they throw stones at it. Sometimes they throw sticks. Sometimes they throw rocks and they fill their pockets or bags. And it's sometimes their belly is full when they take <laughs> you are laughing. But that's how it is. Those were the days of old. Those the, those those are those are the innocent days. It, the, it didn't matter whose house it was, because it was a communal living. We all know that the good of one person is the good of everybody. Alright? So so we will find them um Come, get there, pluck, harvest, and take along with them. You know that's what it is. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, um, that African star apple, that agbalumo, you 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 will see a situation where sometimes they are daring enough not to just throw at it. They will come into your compound and climb the tree and actually pick the fruit. Now, with the, with the star apple that I was mentioning, it is believed that if you continuously throw stings at it, it will lose its sweetness. So they want to actually pluck it. So you find the, the whoever is the most daring amongst them will jump the gate or jump the fence, go in, climb the tree, and start dropping them. And his cohort are picking it, picking the picking the fruit. Uh, and, and that is what came to my mind. That is what came to my mind when I looked at, at, at that scripture that, that, um, that Muhammad beautifully, uh, beautifully read. The issue of fruit, but more importantly, good fruit. Remember our title, title Bear Good Fruit. So, folks, the essence of any believer. The essence, the very nature of every believer is to bear good fruit. And, and our text today emphasizes that. All right? John 15, 18 specifically emphasizes that, that the glory of God, the glory of our God is, to, to the outside world, is commensurate, 
and equal to the amount of fruit that you and I bear. The Bible they read is what you and I do. The, good, the goodness that you exhibit is what they know. Is how they will know that our God is good. Conversely is the case. In other words, if you do not bear good fruit, the outsider, the unbeliever, does not accept the, or does not appreciate the glory of God. How grave and how important it is that you and I do what bear good fruit. How important and how grave that you and I bear good fruit. So a few a, a, a few days ago, a few days ago, um, I got an advice via, via phone, and on the advice it was a text saying, "When people throw stones at you." It is because you are a good tree, full of fruits. They see a lot of harvest in you. When they throw stones at you, when they react to you, it's because of what you exhibit. And, of course, that imagery which I painted to you was what came about. Because there you go. The people get to that place. They throw the stones at those fruits. They actually are daring enough to go there and pluck the fruit because of the good fruit. If by any chance a particular tree is known to have sour fruit, they will not go there anymore. What attracts people to God through you is your goodness. But here is the knacker. Just as, just as in the physical world, we, we, we just saw the, the, the people going there, so it is in the spiritual world. Your goodness, or lack thereof, attracts, or, uh, attracts people to throw stones at you. <laughs> when you bear good fruit, you attract all sorts. No ifs, no buts. Few times, few times we attract good, good stones, but many times, sadly enough, people throw stones, rocks, sticks, planks at you, and, 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 and it makes you wonder. And it makes you wonder why are they doing, giving me back evil for good? Mm. However. Brothers and sisters, this is nothing new. This is what is nothing new. Let us read the Jesus' forewarning to each and every one of us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. The Gospel according to St. Matthew. Chapter 5, verse 11 says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manners of evil against you falsely for my sake. For my sake. Verse 12 goes on to say what? Can you say it again? Let me hear it one more time. And be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So the stones, the hard stones, not the nice pebbles, the rocks, the sticks sometimes with nails in it, that are thrown to you is nothing new is a repetition of history. They did it to the people before you. And they will do it to the people after you. 
But the difference between you and the outside world is that your reward is in heaven. Amen. And it's exceedingly great a reward. Yes. So it says rejoice and be glad. Have no fear. Relax. Keep doing good. He said, in, 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 and, and, in, and in the advice which I said I referred to, it, con it continued and said to me, don't go down to their level by throwing them back stones, but throw your fruits so the seeds of yourself may inspire them to change their ways. Let me repeat. Don't go down to their level by throwing them back the stones that they threw at you. Alright? But throw them your fruits. Your good fruits. Because it, will, it may allow the seeds of that fruit that you throw back at them to inspire them to change their ways. To change their ways. So, in, to bring it back full circle, we're talking about you literally turning the other cheek. You and I turning the other cheek. And I want you to go down to verse, I believe verse 38 of that same chapter. Verse 38 says, And ye have heard it, that it had been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man shall sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, thou not turn away. Ye have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use and persecute you. <laughs> that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain to use, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye, you and I, love them that love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans do the same? And if ye salute your brethren only when ye more than others, do not even the publicans do as well? But ye be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. We are instructed as Christians not to behave like unbelievers. Not to act or react like the outside world. Even though we are in this world, we are not of this world. We have a higher calling. But more importantly, we have a higher reward. As Nike says, just do it. It is short, it is simple, and it is straightforward. Just do it. Bear good fruit. 
Now, per adventure, you say to yourself, why should I be the foolish one? Why, why should I be the idiot? Why should I be the one that will always cheat? Why should I always be receiving injustice? Be the one that is being pelted with stones and rocks and planks. No, I keep doing, I keep bearing good fruit, uh, and I'm being rewarded with evil. So, for what purpose? For what aim? So, you now decide to make up your mind either not to bear fruit or to stop bearing fruit. I have a warning for you. Open your Bible to Matthew chapter 7, verse 19. Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 19, says, Every tree that bringeth not good fruit is hewn down, that is, it's cut down, and it's cast into the fire. That is the ramification and the risk you carry by not bearing good fruit. And that risk and that the intensity of that risk is further encapsulated in the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11 12 through 14. Mark chapter 11 verse 12 says, And on the morrow, when they were come to Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereof. And when he came to it, what happened? He found nothing but leaves. For the time of the fig was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto him, that's the fig tree, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples felt it. Flip on to verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the road. The risk of not bearing good fruit can be, or in fact is, cursed. It is curses. So please be aware. Please be warned. We have no choice. More importantly, it is actually beneficial to us to do what? To bear good fruit. Let us pray. It's a short message, uh, and, and, and I found it quite simple, as I said, but it's a reminder of the fact that whether or not you like it, it behoves on you and I that we do what? We bear good fruit. But it, it's also very important to know that there is a reward for doing that. So you're not doing it just for the sake of it. According to the book of Hebrews, anybody that wants to follow God must first believe that he is and also is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The Lord God Almighty will not owe you anything. Especially something that you have earned. Salvation is free. But the reward, the crown 
that has been created, the mansion that has been built, can be earned. So, I want you to look at the vivid illustration that was painted in John chapter 5, wherein Jesus was trying to describe his relationship with God and his relationship with us. In verse 1, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches, and my father is the husband man. And he tells us in chapter 5 that you should know that you should bear good fruit because the Lord God Almighty is going to prune your branches. The branches that he sees that do not bear good fruit, he will cut them down so that you can bear better fruit, bigger fruit in the verse 2 of that John chapter 15. So I want you and I to pray one thing. First and foremost, acknowledge the fact that you have no choice than to obey God your Father. Why? Because he is indeed omnipotent. He is the omniscient God. He is God Almighty. There is no one before him and there is no one after him. So whatever he says to you, whatever his instructions to you, well, you do it. You do it. So you pray that God will look upon you and I and help us to bear good fruit. Mm. That he will help us to bear good fruit. What you need to be pruned will be pruned. What you need to be grafted will be grafted. What you need to be enhanced will be enhanced. Whatever you need to be shorted for, shorted down, will be shorted down. Because he wants you to do good. He wants you to succeed. In fact, the only way you and I can be exhibits of his goodness is when we do good, is when we succeed, is when we bear fruit. Pray that the Lord God Almighty will not cast you away. Mm. That you will not do anything that will make you lose his glory, that will make you lose his pleasure, that will make you lose his goodness. That you will stand firm. You will stand firm and you will stand right. And at no point in time will you make a mistake of grieving the Holy Spirit. Finally, I want you to pray this. That the Lord God Almighty that has promised that he will reward you will be quick to do it in the name of Jesus. And after all said and done, that you will receive that great certificate of goodness. Welcome to the place that has been prepared for you from the foundation of the days. And may this be our portion. In Jesus Christ's name we are prayed. Amen. 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 Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you. Lord God Almighty, I've done what you asked me to do. And I know that it is written that even if Paul plants and Apollo waters, it is only you that can give increase. Make the hearts of your children be hearts of flesh and not of stone in Jesus' name. Amen. And unto it that has been planted this good seed, I pray, Father, that from it will generate good fruits and they will re bring forth a hundredfold in Jesus name. For adventure there is somebody or some people under my voice that are weary of doing good. My prayer is that you will enable them, you will empower them and you will enliven them to know that at the end of it all, when you end the race, it is always good. It's not the beginning that matters, but the ending that matters. And by the special grace of Jesus Christ, we will end well. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. 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 Amen.